God really orders um, of his messenger to marry some set of people like Oceana. God really arranged a prostitute for her to be his wife. Um, so much on in it, like um, the book of Ruth now, it was God arrangement for Ruth to marriage Boaz. So those are some points I'm pointing at to prove it that God really approved arranged marriage. But let us hear from other people before throwing a question to the house concerning this topic. Okay, you, you were speaking very low, Emmanuel. Did anybody hear what he was saying? Mount, Kim, you? No, did y'all hear I could barely make it out. My bad. I could barely make it out. All right, we're going to come back to you, Emmanuel. Uh, Tavaya, how you doing today? How you doing today, All early right, morning? So. Depending on where you are. Interesting topic. I just was like not sleeping and this kind of gave me a notification. And um, I, I think that I heard the brother say that he was going to allow the topic to um, develop before he really got into his thoughts. Um, but, you know, from my perspective, um, the most high initiate, I think when I look at this topic, what did the most high initiate from the very beginning? according to um, his directive and what he put forth, he put together, as we understand the first marriage of Adam and, and, and he, w- so I set that there first. When I look into the scriptures as it pertains to marriage and dating, well, arranged marriage and dating, I don't see dating in the scriptures at all. The way that we date, we understand dating uh, in this modern European civilization, that's not in the scriptures. I, I've never seen that. And then you had those areas. I think one of the brothers had mentioned, um, you know, it's, it's the arranged marriages so that you have to have a father. There is, to me, there is some substance of that. But also, when you read through the scriptures in First, Second Kings, uh, most often, a lot of these arranged marriages were not always um, something that God would have approved of in the end. I mean, we have Solomon. He had arranged marriages to create alliances with Egyptian, other nationalities of women. And a lot of these women caused him to, as we know, um, turn away from the Most High and what was true. A lot of the kings in First and Second Kings of Judah and Israel, they created alliances for themselves as we understand arranged marriages. And it didn't always go well. Um, they were not always for the right reasons as it pertains to the Most High. A lot of these kings were wicked and evil, perpetually throughout um, the, the, our, our uh, kings sitting on the thrones of Judah and Israel. You know that um, arranged okay. marriage and a marriage for an alliance is not the same thing? Well, okay. Mm. Okay, well, you, you, can, you can elaborate on that. So let me, let me, give me give you my definition of arranged marriage and maybe, you know, I can be taught in that space. Um, arranged marriage to me, as I understand it, because I personally believe in that concept as it pertains to my, I have a, a teenage son and um, I, I um, talk with a group of other sisters who, if they have a daughter in which they are rearing and raising righteously as a virgin and, and those things as my son is given the skill sets with his father and myself to be able to um, have those skills and uh, of of being a household head as it pertains to the most high. We kind of have that, we have those conversations with other families. So in my, in my understanding, this is something that we uh, believe in arranging because we want, as far as keeping the nation pure and all the other things that are associated with that, My son is 13. We're putting, instilling values in him, raising him. And then why I would want him to have a virtuous, righteous wife and, um, you know, that they can build together. Now, if both families can come together and both families have resources that can, we can come together, 
when it's time for them to get married, right? So, you know, that to me, that's an arranged situation. And I'm down for that. I'm actually in that supportive area with other families. So that's my idea of a range. I don't know. Is that what this, this particular topic is about? Yeah. You said a whole lot there. Yeah. yeah. This, this topic <laughs> was, uh, to see what does God approve of? You've already <laughs> said dating is not in the Bible. Right. And arranged marriage is in the Bible. Um, we have plenty of stories that go to arranged marriages such as uh, Isaac and Rebecca. Mm-hmm. Right, uh, right. We have, um, you know, Jacob and Rachel. That, that was supposed to be it. But, you know, um, Laban was, you know, one of those shady mm-hmm. homos and did a whole bunch of stuff to him. Right. But, uh, yeah, arranged marriages. Give me Exodus twenty-two sixteen. 16. Arranged marriages were the way to go in Israel because, mm-hmm. as you put it, um, we needed to keep our bloodline pure. Israel mm-hmm. marrying Israelites. That's right. it. We were, what, what, what they did in Kings, we know that a lot of the Kings, they was doing wicked things. So that their actions were not according to the laws that were put in place. Okay. Right. 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 Read that. Okay. The book of Exodus chapter 22, verse 16. And if a man entice a maid that is not betrothed and lie with her, he shall surely endow her to be his wife. So if a man have sex with a woman, he shall surely marry her. But watch mm-hmm. this. Read on. Verse 17. If her father utterly refused to give her unto him. So there was there was certain situations where the daughter would go have sex with a man without her father's permission. Now the mm-hmm. father would still have the authority to say yay or nay to that to that union whether yeah you're gonna marry her now or no nah, you ain't about to marry her hell no that is correct yeah yeah he could still say that's that's the that was the 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 basis of the topic to show that fathers are the ones that were supposed to be arranging the marriages much like when you read the book of tobit mm-hmm. uh with tobias yeah. and and right. anna and sarah and all of them they 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 made that marriage what it was because That woman was meant to be with Tobias, not nobody else. So arranged marriages is is what our culture goes for. And it's it works a whole lot better. I mean, look at marriages from uh, the 1950s to the marriages now. Right. Marriage has dropped dramatically. Divorce has risen dramatically from the 60s, from the 50s and the 60s all the way up until now. Seems like once we integrated our morals on marriage kind of went out the door. Mm. Mm-hmm. Um. So that's that's the that's the topic for tonight. We uh we want to know what everybody thinks about that. They got some people that may see arranged marriage, uh how a lot of women see marriage period as uh slavery. You never know. So we appreciate your input to buy you. Um true. How you doing? How you doing, brother? Shalom, shalom. So, uh, arranged marriage or dating? Which one does God? Uh, definitely, I would uh, say um, arranged marriage based on the scriptures that I've heard over time. Um, I've been having this question in my uh, mind for a while about this. I've been trying to uh, get up and speak one day just to get this clear. Um, I'm a young man that found out the truth a little while back. I say three years. Didn't look too much into it because of my life, but once I found out I was Judah, I was pretty, you know, happy about it. Then started reading about it. So I followed y'all guys on in IUIC, and I haven't found one based on it. But I've heard a class one time that was talking about um, not making whores of uh god's daughters and so at the time i had um uh three baby mothers and four kids but as a proud dad i took care of my kids but my last um baby mother i had because of the class i went on and married her i didn't wait 
you know, too long after she had the second child, I went on and just said, let's go ahead to the justice of peace and let's get married. Now, the problem is, is the stipulations was that I was telling her before marriage that, all right, I want to do this Israelite thing. I want to get into this Israelite thing, look more into it. And she said, okay. So um, we went to class down here in D.C. one time or twice. And then my life situations that came up, I had to, you know, take some time away. And she had watched the class about uh, how how uh, Bishop Nathaniel got on females. And I guess it burnt her soul up or something. I don't know what happened to her after that. But then, you know, I wanted, I came back home and I wanted to get everything back on track. And then my marriage went to hell. And so, I, I mean, I, I heard a class where I'm not supposed to divorce her. She's not supposed to divorce. So I went through hell for the last two years. And I've been trying to find my way back to to the Bible. So I started doing that. And the more I did that, the more me and her started going uh, away from each other. And I was, I was wanting to ask a question is like, okay, so if we're married and I supposed to marry her and it wasn't arranged, it was just based off of what I heard because her father wasn't her life nor mine. But if I'm going in one direction, and I'm saying to myself, I'm the head of the household. I'm supposed to go this way and lead the family. And she's dragging me back the other way. And what comes with that is her divorcing, uh, you know, child for all the other white man bull crap that comes with it. So I try to steadfast in trying to play both roles. But now I'm at a point where I can't. But because I went back into the world and slipped into the world accidentally because of that situation, my life with her and our marriage has been pretty good. But now that I'm back trying to get back to Israel and, and, and try to follow the law, statutes and commandments, I, my fear is, is that, all right, so if I do that, then my marriage is going to go back to shits and true. it would end up in divorce anyway. True. Am I making it a uh, right. question? I hear, I, I hear what you're saying. So are you, are you married right now, bro? Yeah, I'm still married to her. I'm, you know what I mean? Okay, all right. Uh, hey, Buka, just give me, uh, just real quick, just dealing with it. Um, um, give me that in Amos, Amos three. You know what I'm saying? Um, what you got to realize, you know, when we all, when we, when we come into the, when we come into this walk, you know, what I'm saying we all coming in as as new creatures. Um, that's what I, that's what I'm hearing as you telling the story. Um, yeah, both coming in as new creatures. Um, so everything should be passed. Everything should be over with. You know what I'm saying? Y'all should both start fresh. But now it's to the point where now y'all bumping heads in the in the relationship. So you got to just examine this scripture, bro. I'm going to just give you one scripture. Amos chapter 3, verse 3. Can two walk together except they be agreed? You, the scripture says, can two walk together except they be agreed. This is one of the, um, this is the reason why we have the topic uh, tonight. You know what I'm saying? Arranged marriages are dating because a lot of times in the world, you know, a lot of us were dating, you know what I'm saying? And a lot of us come in and we don't realize until we sit down and go through the scriptures, um, you start to see, you know, do you honestly, do we honestly agree with each other? You know what I'm saying? In the dating process, because you know, the dating process, um, as we want to hear, you know what I'm saying? I believe it's flawed. You know what I mean? So the scriptures are saying, can two walk together if we don't agree? It's, it's virtually impossible. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of times we don't realize that until we come into the scriptures and you get an understanding that one of the parties um, is not totally invested like the other one is. You know what I'm saying? So... You know, that's just something for you to meditate on. Um, as we go on with the topic, I'm sure we'll come back to you. You know what I'm saying? Um, um, but we want to know, you know, you know, what's what's everybody else's opinion on, you know, a mar arranged marriages or dating. You know what I'm saying? Uh, which one does God approve of? Um, so raise your hand. Raise your hand and come up, you know, elaborate on it. Um, Emmanuel, look like you uh, you got your mic together. Um. Uh, according to what uh, Ebuka just said right now, can two works together except they agree. Uh, to me, 
And according to this topic, you know, even two can agree together to work in a destructive way when it comes to marriage. What if it was not God's plan for them to join it together? So I think um, I'm still buttressing on the arranging marriage because, you know, what God has read in this life, there are plans, there are strategies for everything. And God already knows what he has for his own people. According to the scripture, um, in that book of Esther, because God wants Esther to become the queen as at that moment, he had to arrange a feast that will make the queen to do what? To show off a beauty. But because it is God, it is Esther, God wants the earth. You see, it is the arrangement of God in it. So, if two now agree to work together and they are working in the destructive part, you see that that is quite bad for now. So I'm putting down my mark for now. Thank you. Okay, let me just clear it up. Go to Esther 4 and 13. There was a plan for Esther um, being married to a heathen. Um, that wasn't an arranged marriage. That that king, they picked the baddest woman in the in the kingdom, and it was just so happened to be Esther. Esther had a role to play. We're gonna read what that role is now. Oh, was that was that what he's saying, Matt? Because I I was trying to yeah. make it. Out. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. The book of Esther, chapter 4, verse 13. Then Mordecai commanded to answer Esther, Think not with thyself that thou shalt escape in the king's house more than all the Jews. Because Esther was a Jew. And so she got, she got it in her head like, Hey, I'm safe. Everybody else, y'all get you. But her, 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 her cousin made sure that she got a reality check. Read on. For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the arise to the Jews from another place. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. And who knoweth wow, who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this? So he said, If if you don't do what you was meant to do in your position, we still gonna get delivered. But you and your father's house, y'all going to be destroyed. He says, so who knows if this is not the reason why you're in this kingdom? She was put there to save her people. It ain't got nothing to do with no arranged marriage. Esther was picked. Arranged marriage is, I have a daughter. Mount may have a son. We grow up. Our children grow up together. I say, Mount. When they become of age, I want to give my daughter to your son. I know this. I know the, the stock which he comes from. I know his father, his mother. I know that y'all are righteous people. Y'all teach him in the way of righteousness. He keeps the commandments of God. I want my daughter to be underneath a man that's going to treat her right according to the laws of God so that our nation can thrive. Mount would then say, all right, cool. That's that's fine. I agree to Hey, um, hey, Matt, um, I just want to follow up on that. If we can get, um, in the Apocrypha, Esther 14 and, uh, 15, 15 and 16, just to get the understanding of how Esther felt about being with the heathen. You know, there is, um, I, hold on, I, I, hold on. The book of Esther, chapter 14 and verse 15. Thou knowest all things, O Lord. Thou knowest that I hate the glory of the unrighteous and abhor the bed of the uncircumcised and, and of all the heathen. Thou knowest my, thou knowest my necessity. 
For I abhor the sign of my high estate, which is upon my head, in the days wherein I show myself, and that I abhor it with a menstruous rag, and that I wear it not when I am private by myself. Yeah, so, you know, um, as Matt was saying, that was, she was chosen, okay? The king's wife disobeyed him. He's a king. He's got access to, who knows, hundreds of women, maybe thousands. And um, Esther was chosen, but, you know, that was of the Lord. There wasn't a range of marriage where her father said, hey, I want you to be with this heathen. All right. You know, um, it, it's crazy. Uh, I think, I think, um, I think it's the uh, attention. Like, if somebody naturally, like, uh, people will always notice the one person in like a gathering that takes up all the attention. Either they're the loudest, or they're the friend, like they're the coolest, or they're the hottest, and everybody just like kind of fucking hates that person. Because they take all the attention, and um, there's a situation now. It's just kind of weird, like um, that uh, that there are some like um, kings and queens like that, that like acquiring acquiring somebody who could potentially compete for their like head of house title inadvertently. It's such a crazy situation, um, universally. So, does God approve of arranged marriages or dating? I would do an arranged marriage um, for the for the management part. Like, if there's what can, if, I'm, if there's somebody who's going to be meeting a lot of people, um, an arranged marriage may do well because um, that brings in motivated people to like manage manage um like th that person but <clears throat> um this situation is kind of weird because like some yeah. okay so we're, we're asking what does dating, god approve dating. of does god approve of dating or does god approve of arranged marriage god approves of one night stands and orgies <laughs> um, God approves of what? One night stand. God damn. <laughs> Time, to go to sleep, man. Time to go to sleep. He's tired, bro. Bro, this is this is this wow. is what happens when you get damn heathens on stage, bro. Dog on heathens, bro. Oh my god. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe people is just tired right now because, um, <laughs> that's his God. Oh my God. Hey, hey, you know why he said that, right? You know why he said that. That's the spirit they roll in. Hey, hey, get that in Hebrews 12. <laughs> oh my goodness. The book of Hebrews, chapter 12, and verse 16. Lest there be any fornicator or a profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. That's why you get up here and you say simple stuff like that, because that's a profane person. <laughs> straight up, straight up. Hey, go to uh, go to First Corinthians seven. I wanted to touch on what uh, what True had said earlier. We gotta, we gotta understand something. Um, when, when we listen to our elders speak, you have to get the totality of what it means when they say things. Um, certain things they say may be situational. Certain things they say may be uh, general. All right. So, when it comes down to it. All marriages, because when I first came into the knowledge of who I am, I wasn't married to the woman that I'm married to now. You know, we was boyfriend, girlfriend, shacked up, actually. You know, we was living together and we wasn't married. Why? Because that's what the world puts out there. If you're serious in a relationship, y'all move in. Not if you're serious in a relationship, y'all get married. 
You know what I'm saying? So when I came into the truth, that's when it was like, oh, snap, we got to get married. And uh, that entire time, it was like close to a year. We didn't deal with each other because I wanted to see if she was serious about this truth. Uh, hold, hold 1 Corinthians 7, go to uh, Surat. Prove a friend. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 6 and verse 7. If thou wouldest get a friend, prove him first and be not hasty to credit him. So when it came down to my situation, I said, look, hey, this is this is who we are. We got to start doing some stuff. And this is what it's going to be. Hey, you can either get with it or not. And at first she wasn't with it. It was like, I don't know about all of that. She wasn't totally rebellious. But after a while, it was like, look. <laughs> you either gonna get with this or you gonna have to leave and over a course of time she was with it why because her actions showed it so when it comes down to the situation that you in true you didn't already married the woman so this is what this is what you can do go to first corinthians 7 the book of first corinthians chapter 7 and verse 10. Start at verse, uh, start at verse 7. Verse 7. First Corinthians chapter 7, verse 7. For I would that all men were even as I myself. So Paul never married anybody. In, in, the, in the world of Rome, <laughs> the, the the lifestyle that they was living in back then, Paul never married anybody. He never dealt with anybody or anything. Read. But every man have his proper gift of God. So even Christ said, all men cannot receive this same. Because all men can't just be celibate like that for the rest of their life. They can't do that. That's a gift from the Lord. Read. One after this manner and another after that. Mm-hmm. I say thereof to the unmarried and widows, it is good for them if they abide even as I am. So unmarried and widows, he said, look, it's, it's good if y'all don't even get married. Just abide like I do. Just do the work of the Lord. Just every just devote your life, your time, everything that you got to the work of the Lord. Read. But if they cannot contain, let them marry. For it is better to marry than to burn. So when it says that, it does not negate prove a friend. It does not negate let their actions speak. You shall know them by their fruits. It does not negate any of that. It's just basically saying if you can't contain that celibacy, you need to just go ahead and get married. A.K.A. that arranged marriage. Because arranged marriages now, you go through the leadership. They can tell you, hey, this brother's a good brother. Hey, this sister's a good sister. No, nah, this brother ain't ready. No, nah, this sister, she not ready. You could get that report of that person prior. But if that person is not in the body like y'all and you just, both of y'all coming into this knowledge together, then hey, this is what you can do. Read. Verse 10. And unto the married I command, yet not I, but the Lord, let not the wife depart from her husband. So let not the wife depart from her husband. This is two people. They have come into the knowledge of the truth. They've come into the knowledge of who they are. These are the rules to follow. The wife cannot leave the husband. Read on. But and if she depart, let her remain unmarried or be reconciled to her husband. And let not the husband put away his wife. But if there's a situation, because there's situations like... Uh, arguments uh maybe abuse um anything could happen where you know y'all want to separate y'all can separate but she would have to remain unmarried for the remainder of her life you as well or y'all be reconciled now this is somebody when they came into the truth they came into it together these are the things that happened if she does leave, she remains unmarried. Why? Because she believes in this truth. Read on. 
But to the rest speak I, not the Lord. If any brother have a wife that believeth not, and she be pleased to dwell with him, let him not put her away. So, pleased to dwell is she may not fully believe in the scriptures, but for your sakes she'll put the dressing fringes on. She'll not cook pork, shrimp, crab, lobster, catfish in the house. She won't celebrate Christmas. She won't celebrate Thanksgiving. She'll celebrate the high holy days of the Bible. And Lord's will, she'll be won over by it. But true, earlier you did say that you fell off yourself, right? Yeah, yeah, correct. So a lot of times what, what we kind of look over, we look over the fact that women watch our every move. They watch everything that we do. So if you're not serious about it, she won't be serious about it. You know, you know your wife better than anybody on the face of the planet. So you know whether or not she's that I'm going to try to see if you really about what you saying type woman or I'm just going to push your buttons because I know that you're going to fall off. You know what I'm saying? Some people do that. Some people just push your buttons to see how far they can go with you until they can bring you out the spirit and say, oh, I thought you believed in the Bible. Oh, I, I thought I thought this was I thought you was doing this. I thought you was doing that. Yeah, she just she just got me um like that um uh, last um last Sabbath. Um she wanted to throw a birthday party for my son and I told all my kids that I don't celebrate birthdays no more. And so purposely what she did was is she as you would say she tested me um to help her buy and set up and all that other stuff and I wouldn't do it. So what it happens is it causes an argument in the house. And at this point, we done almost got divorced seven times. At this point, I'm saying to her, like, I think it's better if we divorce. But based on the scriptures, I can't. So I'm, that's why I'm stuck. I'm going to put it like this. I'm going to like say something to me. I'm going to read the scriptures and then the rest is going to be on you. I'm going to read the scriptures. The rest is going to be on you. Keep on reading. So this, this last, read the uh, verse 12 again. Verse 12. But to the rest speak I, not the Lord. If any brother have a wife that believeth not, and she be pleased to dwell with him, let him not put her away. So and the wife to dwell, like I said before, pleased to dwell is she's keeping the commandments on the strength of you. And Lord's will, she'll come in later. But on the strength of you, she's keeping the commandments. That's pleased to dwell. Read on. And the woman which have a husband that believeth not, and if he be pleased to dwell with her, let her not leave him. So same thing, vice versa for the uh, for the sister. She got an unbelieving husband, but he's keeping the commandments for the sake of her. Then that's 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 that. Read on. For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. So those else. spouses, those spouses are clean because of you, because of either the believing wife or the believing husband. That other spouse is clean. Because of that person. Read. Else were your children unclean. Because in the house, your children will be unclean. That's confusion. So you will be teaching them Passover. You will be teaching them uh, tabernacles. She's teaching them birthdays. She's teaching them uh, Christmas. She's teaching them Thanksgiving. That's unclean. That's, that's confusion in the house. Read on. But now are they holy. But now are they holy? They're holy if there are um, commandments being kept on both sides in the house. Read. Verse 15. But if the unbelieving depart, let him depart. So if the unbelieving depart, she serves you divorce papers and says, you know what? I'm tired of this. I ain't about to deal with this no more. Serves you divorce papers. Read it again. But if the unbelieving depart, let him depart. Let him go. Let him go. It, they want to leave. Let him go. Read. A brother or a sister is not under bondage in such cases. But God have called us to peace. So you're not under the bondage of marriage in that case because they don't believe. Now, you can't call him an unbeliever. You was just an unbeliever two seconds ago and backslid and then. 
she capitalized on it. You have to make sure that your actions are all the way blameless. She can't bring up nothing. It don't matter how many times y'all argue. You stand stiffly for the word of the Lord. Why? Go to Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10 and verse 34. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's foes shall be they of his own household. So the man's enemies, your mama might turn on you for this truth. Your, your, your daddy, your brother, your sister, they might turn on you because, oh, he part of that Israelite stuff. I ain't messing with him. They might turn on you. So what? Even your wife. The man's foes shall be they of his own household. That's the, that's the condition of the battle. But in knowing that, you got to be blameless. You can't be smoking cigarettes on the side talking about, yeah, we got to keep the commandments. You know what I'm saying? We got to keep the commandments. If you don't keep the commandments, you're a wicked woman. She watching you puff away. Or she watching you uh, uh, celebrate Christmas. She watching you drag the tree in the house for her. But you want her to repent, keep the commandments. Nah, we as men got to stand stiffly, no matter what the cost is. Christ already said that your family and everything, you could lose everything for this truth. Everything. You could lose it all for this truth. But guess what? You'll gain a hundredfold back. <coughs> Good cut, brother. Good cut. I appreciate that. So that's what you can do from, from here on out. You make sure that your actions are lining up with what the scriptures say. You stand boldly for the commandments and don't slip. Part of that is you need to start congregating. I don't know if you congregate or not, but you need to start congregating with believers Believers that's going to hold you accountable, that's going to actually teach you and, and bring you up in the nurture and the care of the Lord. You know what I'm saying? So that you can actually learn what you're supposed to do as a uh, an Israelite man. Yeah, that's what I'm uh, I'm stepping back into um, uh, now. But I got I got one more question. I, I believe you can help me with uh, Matt. Um, I got two kids outside of her and I'm, I've been teaching them my two daughters about Israel and, and all that one of them uh, loves it and all that the other one is 15 years old so she's different but those two live outside the house and I was wondering I don't know if I heard this in a, in a class by me being uh, um, let's say coming back to the truth Will I be able to save my kids who are being uh, taught differently and I can't really do nothing about it? Will I be able to save them in the process of that? The only thing that you can do is let your light shine. You keep telling them over, over the course of uh, their lifetime about the truth. It's their decision whether they turn to it or whether they don't. It's the Lord's will, actually, whether they turn to the truth or whether they don't. Because I have a child outside of the truth. You tell her what you can. You let them know what it is. They make the decision from there. Hopefully, them seeing your example will give them the, the courage and the strength to be like, you know what? Let me try this. Because I actually know of a young sister that's like that. She... house and go to college and then she started congregating because she believed all of that time but she was living with her unbelieving mother i know so that person personally right now so, so it's based on, i just i just plant the seed basically that's it that's all you can do go to Sirach, uh 16 and 1 yeah question chapter. the book of ecclesiasticus chapter 16 verse 1 Desire not a multitude of unprofitable children. So the scripture neither says, delight. Desire not in a, a, a pro, uh, unprofitable children. Don't desire unprofitable children. Go ahead. Neither delight in 
and ungodly sons. Neither delight in ungodly sons. Read on. Though they multiply, and though they multiply, rejoice not in them, except the fear of the Lord be with them. So the fear of the Lord has to be with them. The fear of the Lord has to be with them. Go to Ezekiel 14 and 20. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 14, verse 20. Though Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it, as I live, saith the Lord God, they shall not deliver neither son nor daughter. They shall but deliver their own souls by their righteousness. So you, you can't deliver your children, no matter how much we want to. I want my daughter to come and say this truth now, but you can only do so much. All you can do is you be that proper example and hopefully they'll follow your example later on in life. But other than that, you can't do nothing but save yourself. It's all you can do. Appreciate that, man. All right, no problem. All right, uh, refreshing the room. Uh, arrange marriage or dating. Which one does God approve of? We had a uh, Zivet. Is that my saying it right? Yes, sir, you are. All right. So what's your thoughts on the topic, sis? Arranged marriage or dating? Which one does God approve of? God approves of arranged marriage. No dating. Hebrews 13 and 4. All praises. All praises. Hey, let's read that right quick before we go to, uh, is that fifth? Yeah. All right, let's, let's read Hebrews 13 and 4 real quick. The book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verse 4. Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled, but whoremongers and adulterers God will judge. All praises. All praises. All right, fifth, what's your thoughts on the topic? Um, my thoughts, Captain, is that um a raised marriage is what God approves for, but um in this world right now it's a lot of lust and to be honest with you, I think you just have to just, you know, just date. Cause some some sisters don't know their father. Am I wrong? What about their father figures? I mean, some some sisters are not in the truth or have a congregation. That doesn't mean they don't have father figures. They got a lot of sisters. They got older cousins, uncles, grandfathers that they still can confide in and get uh, some form of guidance from. I, f I feel that. I feel that that's true, but well, we look at it, drug dealers, pimps, et cetera, et cetera, is their father figures. Mm, that's not all the time. You was going to say something out? Yeah, I was going to ask him, um, um, you believe, do you believe in the, you follow the scriptures, bro? Yes. Okay. Okay. Well, you know, that's the thing right there. You know what I'm saying? Um, uh, let me get one um, Second Corinthians uh, 6 and 14 right quick. You know, uh, you got to understand, man, um, when you come in, you shouldn't be looking at, if you believe, you congregate, you shouldn't be looking at the outside world or sisters on the, on the outside, you know, um, trying to prove them. Because like Matt said, you know, they got, there's there are influence in these sisters' lives, you know, or the sisters that you should be, you know, looking to prove. You know what I'm saying? It's a whole process that you can go to. You know what I'm saying? It don't make no sense to um subscribe to the scriptures and then go back into the world and um try to uh look for a date, a wife. When question. you know, you know what I'm saying, in history, that's that's just counterproductive, you know what I'm saying? Qu question, sir. Uh do you believe that? You don't believe that any sister in the world can't be saved? All right, I'm going to show you something. Mm -hmm. I'm going to show you something, and we could just read it. 
and uh, you can take it as you as you will. All right, watch this. Second Corinthians chapter six, verse fourteen: Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. So if, if you believe, if you believe, like um, I asked you, you said yes. Um, the scriptures is telling you, don't don't be unequally yoked with unbelievers. So if you desire to be with an unbeliever, um, that's showing signs that you know you might not really believe in you know what you're subscribing to, um, because it's very clear those that believe they're gonna take heed to the commandment. So if a sister um, a like-minded sister that believes she has men, she has, uh, leaders over her that she can talk to counsel with, um, you as well, that you could talk to counsel with. Hence you can have an arranged marriage. Um, that totally eliminates dating out of it for quote unquote believers. You know what I'm saying? Read on. Be not unque- be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship have righteousness with unrighteousness? So it's and what, what fellowship have righteousness with unrighteousness? Because you, you got to understand, here you are, like we've been discussing earlier. Here we are. You know, we're, we're celebrating um, the high holy days of the laws. And you are trying to um, court a sister outside in the world who doesn't believe these things. You know what I'm saying? So right out the gate, you are you are yoking yourself with somebody um, that doesn't believe. That's counterproductive to you, to your walk. You understand? So you got to that's where you have to examine yourself on. Hey, do I really believe or, or not? You understand? Question, sir. How, how do you feel about brothers being eunuchs in this time? Hey, hey, that's get that in Matthew. Get that in Matthew. You get it out of out of Christ's mouth. You know what I'm saying? Christ, I think, described it the best way. Uh, what is it, Matthew 19? Yes, sir. Matthew chapter 19 and verse 11. Mm-hmm. But he said unto them, All men cannot receive this saying, said they to whom it is given. He said, all, that- men can't re- all men can't receive the saying of being a unit, bro. You know what I'm saying? I know I can't. You know, and I know a lot of brothers that they cannot receive that saying. So Christ is saying, save that to that who is given. You know what I'm saying? In this captivity, I don't I don't think a lot of brothers can walk a paw down. That's a that's a heavy feat. You understand? Read on. But there are no, some that's, units. That's it, that's it on the buca. That's it on the buca. Um so that's I mean that's that's basically cut and dry right there. Go ahead, Kimmy what? Yeah, because uh, uh, the brother was just asking about women in the in the world being, you know, dealing with them. And then he said something about being a eunuch. Um, I want you to get Sirach 18 and 30. Um, <clears throat> because if you believe in the scriptures, uh, you, you know, you have to start applying the commandments. You got to work on yourself first uh, before you think about. Um, taking on a wife. A wife is a is a great responsibility. And just like a lot of sisters, as you stated, don't know their fathers. A lot of us grew up without our fathers or at least a father that um had understanding that could that could prepare us. Uh, a lot of us grow up and we are ill prepared when we start dealing with women. I'll uh, read that. Ecclesiasticus chapter 18, verse 30. Go mm-hmm. not after thy lusts, mm-hmm. but refrain thyself from thine appetites. So when the scriptures say, go not after thy lusts, um, you're absolutely right. Out here in the world today, you see what's in our community. Uh, many women are immodestly dressed, but this is nothing new. Paul dealt with the same thing in the time of the Romans and in the Greeks. Okay. We, we living in the same type of, um, uh, uh, this place is, is much like Rome. Okay. It's an extension of Rome. So we're going to see the same thing. We're going to be subject to the same thing, but the scriptures say, go not after thy lust. So how do we not go after thy lust? Um, Get First Thessalonians four and two. 
we, we have to apply the commandments. And, and you have to congregate. Are you congregating, Phil? No, no, sir. Um, no, sir. See, this, this, you're not going to be successful um, trying to walk righteously without having righteous men that you can deal with, righteous men that can teach you, righteous men that you can reach out to uh, when you're struggling with things. Uh, read that. Um, start at verse 2. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 2. For ye know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that ye should abstain from fornication. That you should abstain, abstain from fornication. That's like going not after thy lust. Go ahead. Question. You know? question. All right, hold on a second. Just hold on. Let me finish this and, and I'll take your question. Go ahead. That every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. So that's something that a lot of us have to learn. Okay. Um, and that happens when you surround yourself with righteous men that can help you. Righteous men that have battled the same things, still battle the same things. How do they overcome those things? Read on verse five. Verse five. Not in the lust of concupiscence, even as the Gentiles which know not God. Because, you know, some of the things uh, Fib, that come about from when we follow our lust, what? Child support. You know anybody that pays child support, Fib? You pay child support? Uh, no, no, Kim, I don't, I don't pay child support, but I have a, I have a question, I have a question though, with, uh, obtaining that. Uh, I'm I'm not trying to scoff, but the scriptures say, um, Matt, uh, take a wife before you burn. I apologize if I'm butchering up the scriptures. Am I right about that, Kim? And you you going you referring to First Corinthians, which uh Matt bought out earlier. But listen to this. Read that again in um verse three. Verse three. First Thessalonians three four verse three. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that ye should abstain from fornication. Uh-huh. Go ahead. That, that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. So you got to learn how to abstain. You got to learn how to have self-discipline. Okay. Because you can't just make an excuse that, um, well, uh, there's a lot of women out here and I'm horny, so I got to marry. Because then you may end up getting with somebody like the brother was talking about true earlier that don't believe. Somebody that's going to make your life hell because you was horny for a time and then you just married her because you didn't take time to prove. That proven process is a period of time. Uh, I think it was Mount bought out. Can two walk together except they be agreed? You're not gonna. You're not gonna know if somebody agrees with you in a short period of time. All right. There's a proven process, bro. So we're just trying to give you the uh, understanding um, of how to at least. Try to have a successful marriage, all right? But if you want to go out there and you want to be solo and you get with a sister and it ends up that she ain't what you thought she was, then you got to, you know, examine yourself when you had an opportunity to listen and apply. You understand, Fifth? Yes, sir. All right, I'm going to... Yeah, uh, Gets to Rock 3625. When um when Kim was bringing it out, we got to understand there are plenty of sisters that are keeping the commandments that have no husband. Plenty of them, plenty of them. You got to be a part of the body in order to get to know any of them. But uh, congregating is a big factor in that, and this is one of the reasons why. Read that. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 36, verse 25. Where no hedges, the possession is spoiled. And he that have no wife 
will wander up and down mourning. That means you're going to be going from place to place. You ain't got no wife. You ain't got nobody to go to. You know, you're, you're burning in your lust. And in 1 Corinthians 7, it's better to marry than to burn. That does not negate prove a friend. That does not negate going through uh, her father figures, which the scriptures tell you to treat the elder men as fathers. The, the scriptures do not negate any of those scriptures. It just means don't try to think that you're about to be a eunuch and you still battle lust. But, it ain't gonna happen. But not everybody has that gift. I, I don't see. I don't see no righteous sisters in Brooklyn, though, Nola. Maybe you need to leave Brooklyn, fifth. Brooklyn is a small place. The world is very big. Maybe you need to change the scenery. And you're not even a part of a camp. So you don't, you, the righteous sisters that you don't see are probably being kept from you. Right, right. Go, go to Ecclesiastes 4 and 9. Righteous people are a needle in a haystack. And guess what? We are the only people with the metal detector. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 4, verse 9. Two are better than one. Two is better than one. Meaning you got to be around some other people, not just yourself. Go ahead. Because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. If you're dealing with lust... You got brothers that'll be around you to help you through that. To make sure, hey, matter of fact, hey, look, we got a flyer mission to go on. Hey, we about to go to camp. Hey, we got we got uh we got training to do. Hey, we got some studying to get done. Hey, we got this to do. Hey, somebody need help in the body. Hey, we need to uh help this brother over here. Hey, we need to help this sister over here. Your hand will be to the plow so much that by the time you do say, hey, I, I think I want a wife, you done already built up so many works for yourself that the report that's going to be given of you is like, hey, this brother right here, this brother in the spirit, this brother be putting in work, this brother care about his people, and guess what? That righteous woman will be there for you. But if you're out there by yourself, playing Russian roulette, looking in a world full of sin, nah, you ain't going to find her. You ain't going to find her. Those sisters... They are up under somebody. They are up under some leadership. Some man's head is, that's why the scripture said, where no hedge is, the possession is spoiled. You're looking around for spoiled goods right now in the world. The sisters that are righteous, they got a hedge around them. That's the leadership that they are part of or that they under. And you got to be careful, man. Uh, just one more point, Matt, too, uh, before you move on, uh, you got to be careful of isolating scriptures, bro. You know what I'm saying? I heard you say, um, you know, what about 1 Corinthians? You're burning, you know, even while all the scriptures is coming out about lust. You know what I'm saying? That's the spirit that a lot of brothers is falling into, you know, um, with trying to exercise, uh, uh, what is it, Exodus 22 and 16. You entice a woman and you, you have to marry her. You don't understand what's going on behind closed doors, bro, and some of these backdoor marriages, bro. You know what I'm saying? That's that's not a place that you want to be. You know, it's cardinal examples in the world. I think uh, the basketball player, I forgot his name, um, he slept with the sister. Yeah, he got um, a, he got a $12 million deal. At the end of four years, she going she gonna to get $9 million of that. Yeah, bro. You know what I'm saying? You Think about that, man. All off of uh, going Bring out to somebody. Yeah, Brittany Renner. Brittany Renner. That's her name. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? And she's getting all that money. Sister, none of that. So, you know, we just warning you, bro. You got to be very careful, man, of black highlighting. All the scriptures uh, that you don't want to hear, trying to you know validate your lust going going into First uh, Corinthians seven about burning. There's still a proving process, so you know what I'm saying. Lord's will, bro. You take heed. You know, get get with a camp. You know what I'm saying, and and start the process righteously. Save yourself a lot of headache, my brother. Thank you, sir. 
All right, moving on. We got Nikita on stage. How you doing today, Nikita? Hello. Thank you for inviting me. How you doing? So the topic of today is, is uh, uh, arranged marriage or dating? Which one does God approve of? What are your thoughts? So I'm a baby in this, but I know like from Hebrews 13 and 4, um, that marriage is honorable to the Lord. And I'm grateful that when I uh, started learning and getting to know God, my husband and I came into this together. Um, shortly after we got married. So we've been married for 13 years now. Um, all of my children are from uh, this man. We have two babies. And I understand from Ephesians 5 and 5 that obviously you can't be a whoremonger and fornicating. And that raises a question for me because obviously with me coming into the word and having a husband, um, I didn't have to worry about the the dating and this and that because I had a head and my husband and I are walking and equally yoked um, as father's trying to keep the commandments. But I hear oftentimes things like dating according to the scriptures and I'm listening to the room and speaking and how you all are saying like, uh, you know, women obviously need a head, which I agree with, and that, um, you know, you don't want spoiled goods. But my question to the room would be, um, obviously, in these times and these days that we're in, many of us were not raised in this, and we weren't taught to be wives or husbands according to the scriptures. And many of us aren't virgins. So what is, I'm curious to learn more about the topic in terms of for people who aren't married uh, that come into this, because you don't really find a lot of virgins. Now, my kids are really little, so I'm also curious to hopefully learn and be edified of raising them in this and how to prevent them from going off in the world and doing things contrary to the word. So I'm definitely curious about this. uh, What does dating according to the scriptures mean for this room? And what if you know, this woman is coming into the truth, but she isn't a virgin. Like, does that mean she can't have a husband? Like, I really would like to understand and just to learn more and to broaden my horizon. Okay. Uh, e, Kim, you, Mount, y'all want to deal with that? E, Kim, you? Yeah, I'll deal with it. Um. Uh, so she said a lot. First, go to uh, first Maccabees, um, uh, 343. So, what are we doing here, um, on this uh platform? Uh, because you're right, uh, a lot of sisters aren't virgins, but neither are a lot of brothers, okay? Um, so first of all, what is it that we're called to do? Let's read that first, first Maccabees, chapter 3. Verse 43, they said one to another, let us restore the decayed state of our people and let us fight for our people and the sanctuary. So that's what we're doing by bringing out these scriptures, bringing out understanding of what marriage is biblically. OK, um, you mentioned Ephesians five. Let's go there right quick. Ephesians Chapter five and let's read verse 26. The book of Ephesians chapter five, verse 26, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word. Mm -hmm. So when it says that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word, it's the, the word of God that's going to change us. It's going to quicken us, all right, that we're going to convert back to the people that God wants us to be. But we have to be cleansed, okay? And that cleansing is cleansing of our minds. Think about the things that we see in the society today. You have like TikTok. You have um uh, what's some of the other things? I don't watch a lot of TV, but you know, these, uh, these TV shows that promote whoredom, um, 
So there's a lot of things that can pervert your mind. Okay. A lot of us, when we, when we grew up again, like I said prior, we didn't have proper guidance. Okay. So a lot of us as children saw things, adult things at a young age and defiled us. Okay. So, um, let's see how, let's see what Christ said about, uh, the condition that we're in. Did Christ just say, you know what? This is a polluted people. I'm not going to deal with them. Get up Matthew chapter 12, verse 31. Matthew chapter 12, verse 31. Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men. But the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. So there are things that prior to Christ you could be put to death for. Adultery is one of those things that you could be put to death for. When you look at our society, especially in the black community, look at all the songs that we love to hear. The music, the melody, and it's singing about what? Adultery, fornication. Things of that nature. But we have to return back to a righteous people. And so now you on a platform where you have men that study the word, that have lived that lifestyle before and have repented. And now we're bringing the truth of the Bible out as an example of this is what you have to do to correct your lifestyle. So. As far as women not being virgins, it's not that um, we're not going to deal with them because they're not virgins. They just stay out to change. Okay, just like the men have to change. Um, I'm going to show you. I'm going to get a law right quick. I want to show you just how far we've fallen. Okay, and why we need uh, Christ. Okay, and why we need this grace. Because again, we could have been put to death for many of our sins. All right. Um, get that in Deuteronomy 22. I'm going to show you something. This is what we're trying to return to. And this is why, um, as, as Matt said, you have to congregate. All right. Because we're trying to build an, the, the next generation and the generation after that, Lord willing, if Christ don't return, that we will have children that can marry each other, the arranged marriages, like the, the uh, title of the uh, the uh, the room, and these children, we will know the parents. We will know that child. We will have a good report of that child. Okay, get that in Matthew. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 13. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 13. If any man take a wife. And go in unto her, and hate her, and give occasion of speech against her, and bring up an evil name upon her, and say, I took this woman, and when I came to her, I found her not a maid. So what is that saying? She's already dealt with men. All right. She's already dealt with men. Read on. Then shall the father of the damsel and her mother Take and bring forth the token of the damsel's virginity unto the elders of the city in the gate. Mm -hmm. And the damsel's father shall say unto the elders, I gave my daughter unto this man to wife, and he hated her. So this arranged marriage, you have a father in the home. Again, this is part of the problem that we have because our family structure has been destroyed. OK, you're not going to have um, righteous women being raised without a father and you're not going to have righteous women understanding how to choose a man without a man to guide her in that process. All right. Read on. And lo, ye have given occasion to speech against her, saying, I found not thy daughter a maid. And yet these are the tokens of my daughter's virginity. And they shall spread the cloth before the elders of the city. So now the father and the mother have to defend their name. 
Okay, because it's saying this man bought up a, a, an occasion of speech like my daughter's loose, like I ain't raised her right. Okay, because that's how uh, we were known for having um, chaste daughters. All right, virgins. Okay, jump down. Uh, no, keep reading, keep reading. Verse 18. And the elders of that city shall take that man and chasten him. Mm -hmm. And they shall immerse him in an hundred shekels of silver and give them unto the father of the damsel because he have brought up an evil name upon a virgin of Israel. And she shall be his wife and he may not put her away all his days. You see that? So he brought up an evil name. If this thing was true, he brought up an evil name on a daughter of Israel. OK, and the judgment is that he would have to pay the dowry and not put her away. OK, so this is how far we've fallen from um, what the Lord uh, designated for us in the first place. That's why we have to return back to keeping God's commandments. That's why you in a on a platform will be teaching God's commandments. All right, sis. You my so my question that I think uh, may not have been answered or maybe I didn't understand it is, then what about the woman that comes into the truth as an adult and she's not a virgin and she doesn't have a father? Is she not a candidate for marriage? Go to 2 Corinthians 6. Go to 2 Corinthians 6. Or it might be five. I get those two. Uh, yes, five and five. And Second. Second Corinthians chapter five, verse seventeen. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. That goes for the man and the woman. So, a sister that comes in the truth, repenting, and she repented of her sins. She's a new creature in Christ. Everything that she's done in the world, that stuff is done with. It's over. We're looking forward to what she's doing in the truth in her future. So a sister can get married, and they do get married all the time. Matter of fact, they had a marriage just this past weekend. Uh, there, there are people that get married all the time. I have been to about six of them in uh, the past, I don't know, I think four years or three years, something like that. But, yeah, people get married all the time. They're new creatures in Christ. They're just a okay, uh, real... You. Okay, go ahead. Just real quick, too. You got to understand, like, this is uh, this is something that our forefathers, uh, they dealt with. Uh, let's get that in the first Timothy's. Four. When the scriptures say there's nothing new under the sun, uh, the same questions that you're dealing with, that you're asking. Um, while Paul said, hey, when you come into Christ, when you start to understand Christ, you're a new teacher. I mean, you're a new preacher. Uh, you got to understand something. This is why. Watch this. You got that, Abuka? Uh, verse. Uh, start at verse 1. First Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. Now the, speak it, sorry. now the Spirit speaketh expressly, that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, Given he to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Now, what the key thing I want you to highlight out of here is uh, doctrines of devils. It said it, the spirit is letting us know that in these latter times we're going to depart from what's what's true from the faith, and we're going to give heed to uh, seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Let's see what some of these doctrines of devils were. Go ahead. Speaking lies in hypocrisy, mm -hmm. having their conscience seared with an iron with a hot iron mm -hmm. forbidden to marry you see that I, one of the one of the doctrines of uh the doctrines of devils these seducing spirits is that they you had people that were teaching during this time that guess what you couldn't lay with a sister if she wasn't a virgin you understand so paul is letting us know that guess what those that are teaching that that's a seducing spirit that's a doctrine of devils because once you come into Christ, the understanding of Christ, you're a new creature. You know what I'm saying? All things are passed away. So, you know, at that point moving forward, 
Now that's when you got to keep yourself pure. You understand? Uh, and improve a brother, prove a sister. You know what I'm saying? So you could build stuff in righteousness and you won't be um, succumb to, you know, all the, the seducing spirits and, you know, the different things that are floating around. around. So hopefully that answered your question, sis, what the brothers brought out. It does. Thank you all. All right. Uh, moving on to the next person, uh, Kelvin. How you doing today? I'm, I'm doing all right. Uh, um, concerning the topic, uh, uh, of course, it, uh, it's uh, arranged marriages. Because uh, in my, my early 20s, I was uh, still living at home. And, um, uh, arguments back and forth with my, my parents. And uh, a couple of different sisters asked me to move in with them. One sister, like, only reason I did move in with one sister because um, her house was a party house, and I, her girlfriends looked better than her. So I knew if she went to work and one of her girlfriends came over, it's gonna be on like Donkey Kong. So I, I didn't want to do that to her, so so I, I didn't move in with her. But yeah, everything worked out eventually. Now I got my own house, but um, I'll, I'll, my, I've always had like a nice disp- disposition. So, uh, so uh, I, like. Uh, well, I guess we're at the women big dog for a while. They, they, they come to somebody like me, like asking me, asking me to move in with, because I get that all the time. But I, I've got my own house now, and I'm, and I, I say, of course, it's it's an arranged marriage. All right. So, uh, you said you got your own place now. Yeah. Uh, you got a girlfriend? No. Good. Because, because, uh. Like uh, like uh, like uh, like like Deacon Ace, I say I I hate uh, ninja s h i t. <laughs> so because uh, so uh, uh, so like when I, when I meet a meet a woman, I'm uh, first first thing out of my mouth is the commandments, and they uh, most of them are like uh, turned off real quick, especially when I talk about the pants. <laughs> But uh, but uh, but it's, but it's it's not bothering me like 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 it did in my younger years because uh, I, I I I know the commandments now so uh, like uh, if I'm meant to if I'm meant to be married before Christ comes back uh, it's gonna happen. All praises. So uh, part of that arranged marriage is so uh, you must be going through the proper channels in order to get that that righteous sister, right? Yeah, I'm going through proper channels to get there. Yeah, like like uh. Oh, uh, I like uh, and like in my younger days, in my younger days, like I like uh, I follow if a woman passed me with a big behind, I would I my, I would follow her uh, to about she was too about she was about fifty feet away from me before I turned my head, but now but now 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 that I know these scriptures, I uh, I might I, I look once and, and go turn my my attention is going is back because because the word is on my mind constantly. All praises, all praises. Good to know. Good to know. Appreciate you, Kelvin. All right. Next, we have uh, Thien. Am I saying that right? Thien or Thane? No, that's right, brother. Hey, how y'all doing? No, you was all right. with, with Thien. Now I was just sitting back listening. That's all. Enjoying the conversation. Uh, y'all was bringing out some uh, detailed scriptures. But I wanted to throw something out there because it was something that y'all brought up early in the uh, discussion. You know, how a lot of you all, you know, you got to think. A lot of people came into their marriage, even the male and the female, and they wasn't, they was non-virgins. And then I heard the one brother say how. Do we actually do what the book says as far as and how we get our wives? Because um, you got to ask yourself this question nowadays, brothers. You know, uh, we didn't get our wives that way. We didn't go to their fathers. We got our wives. We dated them. So when Nikita had asked the question about dating, and if your intentions was to marry that woman or you was just looking for a wife, is dating a sin? 
Because what if you don't? What, what if you date? Eating? Let me finish. What if you date without no fornication and you don't touch the person? You just date them. You take them out to see, like some of the scenarios y'all said about, do they believe in God? Are they uh, about what you serve and the God that you serve? Uh, you find that out by dating or whatever they call courting, whatever. The up-to-date word is dating. So I'm asking, is dating a sin or if you date and you are, shall I say, exercising what married couples do in your dating? So which one is it? Because, I mean, I understand marriage is definitely honorable. I, I deal with y'all brothers on point with that. Can I deal with the question? So I'm asking you, is dating a sin? Can I answer it? Sure. All right. We are talking about general statements of our people. What people, how, what percentage of people that are not following the Bible date without sex? I know a lot of people. A lot. A lot of women date without sex. And a lot of women date to see what type of man they want. Some women, now, of course, sex is in there a lot, but it's a lot of people that's out there that's just dating without without no sexual contact. Now, I'm not sure if you came across that, but I have. Yeah, that is not the rule. I mean, that's not the uh, yeah, the rule. You know, we kind of we kind of take uh, very small percentages of things and then we apply it to make it oh, that's what happens. No. The majority of our people, when they date somebody, they're having sex with them. I'm That's asking you, but about. is dating? Hold on, 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 hold on. Get Surat once again. I don't know no book. Because I, when I've you never said, read that book. Said, hold on, hold on. Hold on. I've never hold read on. the book of Surat. Well, this, the book of Ecclesiasticus or Surat in the Apocrypha is in the 1611 King James Bible. Okay, I, okay no disrespect. I don't read those books. Okay. Well, well, in in this room, when you look at the when you look at the rules, 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 we go by the sixteen eleven King James Bible. If you don't believe that, that's on you. But we believe in the full eighty book Bible, not the sixty six book only Bible. Eighty books, because that's what the Lord gave us. So I ain't, I, I ain't knocking that, bro. I just want to know what's dating. Ecclesiasticus in the book of Ecclesiasticus. Chapter 6. Read that. The book of Ecclesiasticus. Chapter 6, verse 7. If thou wouldest get a friend, prove him first. That's why the, and scripture, be says, the scripture says, if you would get a friend, not date somebody. When you first are looking for marriage, you need to be looking for somebody who's going to be your friend. Why? Because y'all need to have commonalities. Now, the people who have uh, courted without sex, hey, kudos to them. But that's not the majority of our people. That's not the majority of our I just people. I just asked you, is dating a people, sin? You keep I'm negating the question. I'm not done. I'm not done. Is dating I'm a not sin? Not done. I'm not done. I'm not done. So when we have the scriptures, what they call dating, the Bible calls proving. You prove somebody as a friend. And as a friend, guess what? There are boundaries. There are rules. There ain't no sexting. There ain't no fornication. There ain't no kissing, no touching, no nothing. So if they're dating and they're having fornication, yes, it's a sin. If they're proving according to what the scriptures say, no. Then again, in order to prove somebody, read it again. If thou wouldest get a friend, prove him first. Read. And be. And be not hasty to credit him. And be not hasty to credit. Oh, yeah. Because a lot of sisters, they'll go one, two, three months without having no sex. And then they start burning. Month four, they wham, bam, thank you, man. Doesn't really happen often that people are celibate until marriage. Does it happen? Yeah, of course. Is that is there is there sin in there? No. But guess what? That's not the majority of our people. So dating with sex fornication and all of that stuff yeah that's a sin 
did proving according to what the scriptures say? No, there's no sin in that. And there shouldn't be. Because why? You're proving that person as a friend. Right. And Matt, hey, just to add, hold on one second. Just to clear it up before he go, bro. Hold on one second. Hold on oh, one second. No. You no. said so when you broke hold it down. Hold on one second, bro. Hold, hold on. on one second. Let Mount go. Hold on one second, bro. Just to add to what uh, Matt was saying, even when we send brothers and sisters to prove um there's still things that we put in place like a chaperone, you understand, to prevent things from happening. Because, again, when we, a lot of our people, we deal with lust, you know what I'm saying? And let's just be real, bro. You get, you know, you get with a, a sister or brother, y'all get alone, you know, anything can happen. Anything can happen. That's why, that's why things are put in place where, okay, let's put a chaperone with this, with these two. Make sure they don't go anywhere, you know, so we can b prevent fornication, so we can prevent the everything that comes with dating. When you look up the definition of dating, you know, it's telling you somebody that you sexually uh, are, are interested in. And we know when you're growing up in the inner cities, you know, when you go out on a date, that's that's the first thing to your mind it, is sex, bro. You understand? So there's things that that, that are put in place to prevent our brothers and sisters, um, so they won't fall into the fornication aspect of it. I got you. Now back to Nolan. Now I, and I like that point that you made, Mal. Now back to Nolan. Now the point that you made, just to get an understanding, one minute you said that dating is a sin if you have, if you fornication. Am I correct? You know what I said at the end. Don't do that. Okay. You know exactly what hold I on, said. hold on, bro. Hold on. Listen, calm down, bro. I'm very calm, but you know what I we, said. We, we, you've been up here. You've been up here quite, quite a bit. So you okay. Know exactly so let me let me ask another question because we the reason why I'm bringing this up is because, like Mount said, let's be practical, bro. We both we all have been there, and I'm not going. You can't sit there and, and say you haven't. So I'm asking you another question. So, because what you said, you said two different things, but I understood what you said. You broke down one minute. You said dating is cool as long as you're not fornicating. Then you said dating is sin as long as when you put in I fornication. I understood. I, I never bro, said that. Okay, you didn't say it that way. I'm just I did, breaking. So don't that. put words in my mouth. Nolan, we're not going that, bro. Yeah, we are. Don't put words. We just in my getting mouth. an understanding. Don't put words in my mouth. I said you're proving according to the scriptures. And according to the scriptures, you should be proving a friend, not being hasty to credit. Okay, well, like listen, Mount said, see, you're going to be going on, out with chaperones. Hold on, bro. Y'all are going to be hold talking on. about the scriptures. I don't, going to be I don't going lay with my friends, said. bro. Y'all are going to be Neither going do you. what the scriptures said. Y'all are be going to go with the, what the scriptures said because you're you, marrying, you're, you're getting to know a friend. No, let me, hold on, bro. So are you married? Very. Okay, how did you meet your wife? And be honest, bro. What does that have to do with the topic of the discussion? Because it, ha it has a lot to do with it. Because like dating and marriage is involved. So which one of those two did you do to involve your wife? What does that have to do with the topic it of the discussion? It has a lot to do. It's just like how I met my wife. You got, you, got, you, got, you got one more chance then. The topic of discussion is, does God approve of arranged marriages or dating? You yourself said that there is sex in dating and they shouldn't be doing that. So does God approve of arranged marriages or dating? We already said that, bro. But what you're trying to do is get away from what I'm asking you because you can't answer it. Okay, if that's what you take. But though. that's cool, though, bro. No, that's cool, bro. I, I'm going I'm to yield the flow, bro. I mean, yeah, appreciate you. Yeah, I mean, he did answer it, bro. I mean, <laughs> he, <laughs> hey, let don't worry. Now, he, he asked it, he asked it, but I this asked it no, way. This ain't yeah. no pride thing, He was bro. getting offended. He was this getting no offended. Pride and I'm going to yield the flow. At all. I'm going to leave the flow, Nolan. All right, all right. Gonna, hey, bro, we both educated in this word of God, but I'm going to leave the flow. Yeah, you didn't right. give one scripture yet, but you, but yeah, you, you can't. Yeah, you can't, you can't, you can't say that, bro. You can't say that oh, because, okay. hold on, hold on. You know hold what, bro? Hold on, I did have a scripture. Hold on, bro. I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to move you to the audience, bro. I don't want to. Can I, can I read this one scripture, bro? Hold on one second, bro, and then we're going to give it to you. You should have read the scripture first. Yeah. Now you want to bring out Nolan, stop trying to act like you weren't out there fornicating before you became married, bro. Bro, listen, hey. Hey, you got to understand, this is why we, we, we just went over this um, with the sister Nikita. You know what I'm saying? 
when you come into the body, when you come into the understanding, I was in the world dating. When I came into the understanding of Christ, I understood you cannot do that anymore. You understand? Now, fortunate enough, okay, I did, I did come in with my wife. We came in married, but yes, we met dating. But that doesn't give a give get um Ibuka, get that in uh Sirach, I think it's 15. And I'm gonna get two scriptures. I'm gonna I'm gonna show you, bro. Sirach chapter 15. No license. Uh 20. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 15, verse 20. Mm-hmm. He have commanded no man to do wickedly. Mm-hmm. Neither have he given any man license to sin. It said he ain't did, he's not commanded us to do anything wickedly. So when you come into the truth, this doesn't give us an excuse if you come in single, a single brother, single sister, to say, okay, well, you know what? Y'all came in and y'all was dating in the world. Nah, listen, this is the cup that the Most High God gave you. So now when you come into the truth, guess what? Now you got to show forth a righteous examples to the brothers and sisters behind you. You understand by doing what? Following what the scriptures say. Now you understand Christ. You're supposed to be a new creature. So now what are you supposed to do? You're supposed to prove the process. Go through the proving process. Speak to the leadership. You know what I'm saying? Don't go back into the world and say, you know what? Well, I'm going to date because uh, uh, the majority of the people around me are dating. That's not how this thing works. You understand? And this is this is basically what what Paul was telling Timothy as well. Go to First uh, Timothy five right quick. Uh, five and verse 14. The book of First Timothy, chapter 5, verse 14. Go ahead. I will therefore that the younger women marry. You see, they said, I would therefore that the younger women marry, not, not date around, uh, have sexual um, contact with this brother, that brother. You know what I'm saying? That's never what our forefathers wanted for our sisters. You understand? It was it was given, it was given to them to marry. How do you marry? You go by what the scriptures say. You prove a sister, you prove a brother, so you won't end up in a domestic violence um, situation, a situation where you're dealing with a brother with a, a STD. You understand? None of the none of these things. So when you come into the truth, you got to understand, bro. Uh, all of us are coming in in our own walk, in our own perspective uh, uh, times in life. Whatever the, whatever the cup that the Most High God gave you, that's how you got to walk. That's how you got to walk this thing down. So if you came in single, you got to understand, okay, I'm single. Let me learn these scriptures and let me find a righteous husband or a righteous wife. So I, I can go around all the things. Cause you don't know, you know, it's a lot of people that come into the truth. You don't know what these people have been through, you know, before they came into the truth, the fight and the arguments, you don't understand. You still don't know what they're going through right now. It's a lot of people that's in the truth where, you know, they come in, they might be righteous, but at back at the ranch, you know, it's a whole different, it's a whole different ball game. You understand? You got fighting and murmuring. So to prevent these things from happening, you have to follow the scriptures. Don't, he just, he's not giving us a license to do wickedly or, or to sin. He gives us strict instructions, how we should move as a people. And we got to abide by them based off of how you came into the walk. You understand? I understand that, bro, and I and I agree with what you just read and what you said as far as that script, the last scripture you read. Can I read one place? This is why I had asked a question from what I'm about to read right here. Is second, I will read it. I will read it. That's cool. I That's will cool. read it. That's cool, bro. I knew you was going to be the reader. Second Peter, the first chapter, and pick it up at verse 8. The book of Second Peter, chapter 1, verse 8. For if these things be in you and abound, they, sh- they, make, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Keep reading, bro, all the way to the 10. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off. And have forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Wherefore the rather brethren give diligence to make your calling and election sure. 
For if ye do these things, ye shall never fall. So that's why I had asked. So hey, so I had asked him to read if, that. Mom. If a brother or sister coming to the truth, come on, bro. You, how, you how I read the script. That, I'm trying. How do they make their calling an, an election sure, then, bro? How do they do that? Can I can I finish, bro? Can I finish? If you don't mind, if if, if I can't, then I leave it alone. I'm asking you a question. How how do you make? I'm trying to answer why I, I read that scripture. Why I had asked Nolan what I asked him. I asked him that because he was once purged from that, and I understand we all was once purged, but in this generation, without with the structures broken down and all that, people date, bro. And people and everybody out here ain't, ain't laying around. And we, I'm not saying let's promote that. All I'm saying is these people do that. So shall we say, oh, you sin we doing that? No, I understood where Nola was coming from. I just asked him that from that perspective on that scripture I read. That's all, bro. Okay. First thing first. Uh, he was on That's stage all. when we read. I wasn't, I wasn't uh, saying y'all was promoting. I'm not. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. I he was saying. on stage when we read 2 Corinthians 5 about being a new creature. He was on stage for that. I understand. Um, when, when it comes to down... Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, whoa. You, you said your point. Now, when it comes down to uh, me forgetting that I was purged from my old sins, I think you kind of overlooked the fact that we made this room to get people on the path that we're on now. So the, the purpose of this is to show people that God does not approve of dating because... Nine times out of ten in the world, when people are dating, they're fornicating. That's why we have I wasn't bro. parent. So home. you can't say that. Like, you, you, you said you, your you're banned you false piece. witness, bro. You said your That's piece. Not you said your case. piece. You said your piece. We got statistics. Eighty percent of children born today are born in a single parent household. Eighty percent. And bearing false witness, I'm not lying on nobody. So when you when you when you look at statistics of our people. Our people's detriment has been dating, boyfriend, girlfriend, all of that stuff. And where do we learn dating from? We learn that from youth. We learn it from when we're young. We be having boyfriend and girlfriend all when we young. Why? Because our parents ain't raising us up in the care and nurture of the Lord. They're not raising us up like that. They're raising us up with television. They're raising us up how they was raised, which was wrong. So now we're trying to actually bring forth the right understanding and the right way to go about it. We don't care what everybody else is doing. The scriptures tell us that we are not of this world. And if we were of the world, the world would love its own. So we know that the things that we're saying out of the Bible is going to be an unpopular opinion. So what? Our people, if they, gonna, if they continue to date and fornicate, they're going to die. Unless they get married and start keeping these commandments, then they'll live. We're going to move on to Naya. How you doing today, Naya? Hey, y'all. Um, dang, I ain't been up here in a minute, but um, I'm, I want to thank y'all for having this conversation. Um, okay, well, let me answer the, the question of the room. Um, well, I, I do agree God approves of arranged marriages. Um, I, y'all really answered my question because I had a question for y'all, but um, then, like, really y'all answered then y'all really answered my question about the whole dating thing because um i'm a person that dates and me and my i can't call my partner because we're dating but i guess well me and my partner we haven't had sex yet um and i did ask like i did ask him before like if we were able to start by getting a relationship could we practice abstinence until we get married or you know and I don't think he was all too fond of the idea or whatever. So it kind of like made me look at him sideways a little. But I, I do appreciate y'all having, having this topic, especially because um, it falls to like a deeper rooted thing. Like, yes, bil- biblically, but also like in real world. But I don't, like it's weird. I can't really explain it. But I I understand I understand the message. Um, and I I think it needs to be talked about it within our community. I had these conversations with my girlfriends all the time. Like I just want different from myself and for my friends, really. Um, but I know that sometimes I probably come off a little judgy, like when I speak about the things I want for myself, such as marriage, um, before kids. And all of this, like, um, hey, that's hey, sis, that ain't judgy, that's biblical. 
A lot more sisters need to need to do that. Marry before you carry. They need to do that. Keep keep that thought process going. Oh uh, no, I'm going to keep the thought process. I'm just saying, like when, when me and my girlfriends are having these conversations, like some of my friends actually have kids out of wedlock. Like, I was born out of wedlock, and it's I don't think that I'm looking down my nose at them. It's just like I want better for us. Like I want us to have to live in these fruitful households with our husbands, and both parents contribute both um, equally to the child. Um, because my friend sent me a, a post the other day, and it was like um, mothers have a responsibility. Dads are privileged. Oh no, mothers have obligations. Fathers are privileged, and I'm just like it shouldn't be like that. Like if I'm if you're if we're married anyway, like speaking from a marriage standpoint, we both have a privilege. I mean, an obligation to our child. Whereas if I shack up with somebody and I get pregnant and he just decides to leave me, then I do have the obligation to my child, and he does have the privilege to be there when he wants or when he doesn't. So I I think about it on that. Base, I'm glad. Like I said, I'm glad y'all are talking about this because it needs to be addressed. It needs to be talked about. Hey, I got and all a of question. That. Um, it, it was interesting what you said. You said you don't. You have a. You don't want to call him a partner, right? I'm. I'm sorry. What did you say? You said you don't want to call the person that you're with a partner. Um. Yeah. Not my part because we're not in a relationship, so I didn't feel right calling him my partner. <laughs> so yeah. Right. I, right. The point I was going to make is a lot of times when our sisters get into these relationships, they get into a relationship with somebody, and what do they call them? Um, boyfriend, girlfriend. Yeah. So, are they date? They they are literally saying they have a boyfriend, not a man. A boyfriend. So when that boyfriend knocks them up and he leaves acts like a child can't we see that the word right there in and of itself would show you that this ain't marriage things right here to have a boyfriend or a girlfriend you're literally calling yourself a child friend i agree um especially with with what what all goes on especially like commitment to each other after the child like I feel like sometimes even after the child mm, I, so because someone said earlier that they were in a marriage where they felt as though them and their spouse wasn't seeing eye to eye and they, oh and that's what that's that's another point I want to bring on um, bring up because I don't been on the stage um before and I've always said, like, I'm not new. To, I'm not true to this. I'm very new to this. <laughs> I just started really indulging in the Bible and reading the Bible. And I'm I'm reading these things. And I do notice that people are being married off. But it's like as soon as they meet these almost arranged marriage, these people that they're arranged to or to marry, it's like the next verse is like, oh, I loved her. And it's like, how do they know that they love somebody that fast? It's like, because you want to know why? Like, because we didn't have the thought process that we have today. See, a lot of times today, we'll meet a lot of people that say, well, y'all keep talking about marriage, but, you know, marriage don't always work out. And, you know, you never know what somebody could be. They could change after you marry them. And that all of that stuff is, is movie stuff. You know what I'm saying? That's why the scriptures told you, prove a friend. Don't be hasty to credit them. If you're not hasty to credit them, you're going to you're going to fully get to know that person. You're going to see them get upset. You're going to see them when they're happy. You're going to see them when they're angry. You're going to see them when they're sad. You're going to see them through all of these different things. Why? Because you're proving them over time. Y'all are, y'all are seeing, okay, how does this person act? Does this person want the same things that I want? Does this person follow the commandments of God? Because if they follow the commandments of God, I'm going to let you know a little secret. If you are proving a man and that man follows the commandments of God, that man is going to be A, about his nation. B, about family and and building up the nation. C, about teaching you and the children on how y'all can can, can further this truth and further this gospel to the four corners of earth so that we can all get the kingdom. Now, when y'all get married, that's why you said, well, I want, you know, when, when, when you have children and you're married, situation is different. You can't look at it and say, Oh, well, he might change. 
uh, it's kind of slim to none if you actually know that person and you know the fruits of what they've been doing. And when it comes down to, to arguing, I mean, arguments happen. But in the scriptures, when they found that person that they fell in love with, I mean, it was there. First of all, that 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 woman looked good and that brother looked good. We were good looking people. And what else do you need to base your love on? Y'all know that y'all Israel, y'all keeping the commandments of the Lord and your womb is prepped and ready for children. That's what men want. And that's what women want to have. Women want to have children. Women want to have a family. Even the ones that lie and say, I don't want no kids. They want children. And if they don't want them now, they're going to want them 10 years from now when they damn near too old to have them. But they're going to want children. And every single time, it all goes down to the same thing, especially in the scriptures. When that marriage was put together, God was in the midst of it. So when God is in the midst of it, yes, you're going to love that person. Hey, Amen. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Um, I want to address a couple of things, uh, sitting back listening. Um, first off, uh, about this whole dating thing, can we get um, Isaiah 5, 20 and 21? Um, dating has not been beneficial at all in our community. All right. Let's just let's just call it for what it is, because um, one of the things that hasn't been mentioned is the over what, 19 million abortions? since the 70s what does that come from and when you look at the statistics a very small percentage of married women get abortions all right so let's read that book of isaiah chapter 5 verse 20 woe unto them that call evil good and good evil that put darkness for light and light for darkness that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Mm-hmm. Read on. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and so, prudent. Destruction to those that are wise in their own eyes. They say, well, you know, this, you know, this is this society we date. We done brought out an abundance of scriptures showing that the Lord is not dealing with dating the lord is dealing with marriage so you know don't don't try to clean up an unclean thing and make it as though well if you do it this way then it's righteous i'm gonna show you in the scriptures get on leviticus 19 and 29 because it starts from a young age some of you um, may have grown up in the in the era where um, we became latchkey kids. When mama was outside the house earning a living and you got a little key wrapped around your neck to make sure you don't lose it. And you coming in the house 10, 11 years old. Um, and from that time forward, you had too much time on your hands. OK. And what happened by the time you turn 13, 14, 15, you got a little secret boyfriends and girlfriends. Let's read that. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 29. Do not prostitute thy daughter to cause her to be a whore. Mm -hmm. Lest the land fall to whoredom and the land become full of wickedness. This place that we in is full of wickedness. You can't go outside the house and walk down the street without seeing uh, immodestly dressed sisters. You can't turn on the TV. You can't listen to the radio. You can't uh, grab a, a, a magazine off the stand without seeing sex being promoted. We in Babylon. It just it is what it is. This place is full of hoarding. And it says, do not prostitute thy daughter. A lot of you don't understand that when you allow your daughters to be on the drill team or cheerleaders, you're setting them up to be, to have boyfriends. And what are they getting out of that? When they are no longer virgins and that boy don't marry them, 
or when they be when they uh, end up pregnant and either end up having an abortion or end up bringing a child into your house. OK, the scriptures say then the sister is defiled. Matter of fact, get that uh, in uh, Sirach 42. The young lady then is defiled. And many of you know, because some of some of the sisters may have already lived this life um, about how hard it is when they 16, 17, 18, raising a baby by themselves because the, the, the boy that they had the baby by, he was out the picture uh, before the baby bump was showing. On to the next one. Let's read that. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 42, verse 9. The father waketh for the daughter when no man knoweth, and the care of her taketh away sleep. When she is young, lest she pass away the flower of her age, and being married, lest she should be hated. Mm -hmm. In her virginity, lest she should be defiled. Lest, and she, should be and lest she should be defiled. Lest she should be defiled. Go ahead. And gotten with child in her father's house. Mm. So when you have a child out of wed like a wedlock still in the home, the Bible says you defiled, sister. That's what we are trying to prevent. That's what we're we're trying to move away from. So when you come on this stage and you saying, well, um, in this wicked society that's full of sex, I know plenty of people that date without having sex. I don't believe it because I was out there in the world too. I don't believe it because I don't know plenty of people that dated without having sex. Most of the people I knew that dated was having sex, including myself, when I was out there as a youth. Um, one more. Go to uh, James chapter 4. James chapter four, verse five. So let's stop playing games with each other. OK, we we coming on here to try to heal our people with the scriptures. If you don't have understanding, we're going to give you the understanding. But we ain't going to sit back and let, let uh, confusion be caused in the room when there are people that sincerely want the help just to promote uh, some simple agenda. Go ahead. Read that. James chapter four. Verse 5, do ye think that the scripture saith in vain, the spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy? Do you think that's in vain that the scriptures say that your mind is telling you one thing, but your body is saying something else? Ain't, ain't R. Kelly on trial and saying that same song? Am, am I tripping, Nolan? <laughs> 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 I'm gonna mute my mic. His, his behind on trial, trial, trial. Hey, uh, we got uh, Christisha. That's a unique name. Christisha. Christisha. Yes. <laughs> All right, so um, the topic of the room: arranged marriage or dating. Which one does God approve? That's uh, that's um, a very interesting topic. Um, I have a few different. Um, well, I would say together I have one ideal about it. Um, but it's paired with a lot of different things. Um, I'm going to try to make it um as simple as possible and clear. Um. I think in a realm of what you were saying um, about the dating, I think it can be paired with um, the arranged marriage, um, but according to God's word. Um, I think arranged marriage, in a sense, I'm trying to get a, just trying to get a really good understanding. When you say arranged marriage, do you mean ordained by God? And put together by spiritual leaders in the sense of like uh, ministers and pastors and like, I guess people in the, like people in the church that are, are the leaders are, is that what you're saying as far as arranged marriage? Yep. Okay. So I have it correct. Um, 
So when it comes to dating, I do agree with you um, on a general level. Many people that's dating in this time are having sex. Um, more, more, more some than not, right? Um, but I do believe it is possible. Um, I would say in the realms of courting, because that's the term I use, because it signifies that there is no sex going on. When you use the word dating, because it's so modernized and, I mean, we all know the definition of dating. Um, I try to steer away from that because I want people to like, kind of like somewhat understand that when you're courting, you courting for the purposes of marriage and it's going to look totally different. And I think someone on here said that when you're courting, um, you have chaperones to keep from, um, to keep you two from doing certain things that you would possibly do if someone wasn't present. Um, that's how I was raised. I was raised, um, um, lack of terms, old fashioned. <laughs> I was raised old fashioned. Um, well, traditional to, um, the Bible and, and adhering to the rules of no sex before marriage. Um, I still, I still firmly believe in that. I think that it's more problematic for people um, to be having sex before marriage because of all the things that comes with it. So I'm not trying to, I don't want anyone to get the perception that I'm taking the Bible out of the perspective or off of the platform, but <clears throat> I am, I'm well educated and schooled in the, the psychological processes of the brain. And what I do is I analyze that and I pair it with the Bible and then I pair it with what God is requiring individually of us. And I think that um, dating is problematic um, in the literal sense of when you're dating, you're having sex and sex is a powerful thing. And I think that before you do something like that, you definitely should do it within the confounds of marriage which is ordained by God because it eliminates a lot of the things that um, you would go through um, before marriage. It eliminates a whole lot. Now, like you said, get married, you might have arguments, things like that. Things may happen. But when someone is clearly vetted, um, meaning that you're going under the confounds of your leadership and this person is really vetted out, um, as far as like being friends with them, um, and getting to know them, I think it eliminates a lot from a psychological perspective. So I definitely think that, um, with the message, like the, the arrangement message of marriage or dating, which one God approve of. And from my perspective, I would take out the dating. I would put in courting. And with that said, I would say, God would approve of that. Um, so I, I would say that's 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 my take on it. Um, okay. All right. The reason so why me, the reason so just why we made, any, you know, right. The reason why we made this room go to uh, Matthew fifteen and three. The reason why we made this room, and uh, it's. <laughs> It's 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 hilarious when you hear grown men try to defend uh, the world and what the world does. So they gonna do what they gonna do. So what? So what? We're trying to teach our people the right way, whether they hear, whether they forbear. But we teaching our people the right way. We teaching our sisters keep your legs closed. If that man is 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 as serious as he says he is. You're going to say, hey, I believe I'm an Israelite and I keep the commandments of God. Do you believe that? <laughs> oh, I want you to meet. I want you to meet. Peace out. That's the message that we send. Them. But a lot of people, they stuck on this right here. Read that. Matthew chapter 15, verse three. But he answered and said unto them, Why do ye also transgress the commandments of God by your tradition? So by traditions, by the traditions of men, that's what we continue to do. That's why we had to address dating. 
because nowadays people don't really court like talking about like right. uh, like uh, right. Sister uh, Kritisha said more times than none people are really not courting they're not they're dating they're acting like they're married they're shacking up they're having whole families without being married whole families no paperwork Kudos to the people that are not having sex before marriage. But guess what? That's few and far between. That ain't the majority. That's can not I, the whole. Can I say something else, if you don't mind? Um, also, I think that we cannot get confused um, with if if you coming into, um, I, I say holiness, righteousness, um, living according to his word. Um, I think people try to deflect. Because it's like, oh, well, you were doing this and you were doing that. And now you're in God and you're you're painting this picture. Um, I think your life speaks for you, for you. And I believe just because you're not divulging um, your private information or putting your private information on a platform doesn't mean that you are forgetting or um, not acknowledging where you come from. I think that a lot of people think that when you expound in the word of God and you're explaining things and you're giving people knowledge and helping them have wisdom and understanding, they think that you have to put your life on display. And I think that that's problematic right there because you shouldn't have to do that in order to tell the truth. That's, um, that's, that's called, uh, that's called Christianity, sis. They want to hear your testimony. That's what they want to do. They want you to stand up, hoop and holler, say your testimony. When we clearly read that when you're in Christ, old things are passed away and all things have become new. That's the purpose. That's the point. The point of this room is to show people you can change. Right. Every, old things can be passed away. Sex before marriage is not something that God approves of. So right. We need to start acting as holy as we are because we are a holy people and we need to start acting like it. Nothing else is going to work. We've tried everything. Agreed. Um, it's just a lot of excuses. And I think that people need to hold themselves accountable for their behaviors and have some discipline. Um, hey, one and thing, a lot one of people are not. What you said, sis, I won't cut you out. One thing about what you said is a saying in the world called a hit dog holler. <laughs> so <laughs> people get mad because you because you're trying to correct your people. and they, Well, you can't say that. You you just up there stomping on people. You can't judge nobody. See, the fact is, the lack of judgment between black and brown people is mm -hmm. the reason why we in the situation we in now. We judge mm -hmm. our kids all day. But our brother, we tell our brother, you can't judge me. But you will pass judgment on your kids because they right. doing things that don't align with the morals that you set forth. So when things don't align with the morals that God has set forth, all of a sudden now people say you can't judge. When the Bible well, tells us to judge. Right. Um, and well, my thing is like when you, <clears throat> when you expound in the word of God, um, you're not judging them. The word is, I think a lot of people don't understand that. Like if I read a scripture and say, um, God said, this is an abomination. I, I, I always tell them, you're going to have to take it. You're going to have to take that up with God because he's saying that in his word, I'm, I'm the vessel that he speaks through. So if you have an argument of what's right and what's wrong, I'm going to need you to um, get on your knees and pray. And I'm going to need you. <laughs> I'm going to need you to talk to the Lord about it. And I'm going to need you to argue with him about it because I can't do nothing about that. I go by what he says. And if he says something is wrong, it's wrong. And that's all, you know, that's all to it. But, you know, we live in a world that we don't like discipline and we don't like correction. And we want to um, pretty much do any and everything that we want to do. And we don't want to have consequences. Um, and I think that's what you guys are trying to do is help people to have more discipline. Um, and I appreciate this room and, and I'm listening, I'm very old fashioned. So I, I, I really, I'm, I'm, I'm there with you a hundred percent. So keep doing what you're doing. All praises, all praises. This sister gets it. All praises. So we do want to thank everybody for their participation tonight. Uh, short answer for the question. God does not approve of dating. He approves of marriage and arranged marriages. If the marriage just so happens to be arranged by the law, statutes and commandments of God. So uh, y'all can email us at biblicalsmoke at gmail.com. If you have any further questions or 
want any further information. All right. Join the club Biblical Smoke on Clubhouse. Follow us on Twitter at Biblical Smoke. Also, hashtag Biblical Smoke on Twitter. Let us know your thoughts about the room tonight. All right. Uh, we do appreciate everybody's input. Uh, Mount Kim Yu. Y'all got any other final words for the people? Do what God is leading you to do. Hey, keep the commandments. Hey, I just want to say this last thing, uh, Matt. <laughs> uh, Boog, if you could just read uh, Matthew five twenty seven, because uh, how do most people end up dating today anyway? If they don't meet somebody on their job, they they what going on Tinder or some of these uh, dating sites? That's how they hooking up, and you know what happens. Hey, read that right quick. Matthew chapter 5, verse 27. You have heard that it was said by them of old time, thou shalt not commit adultery. Me too, bro. Me too. Can you pull up? But I say unto you, that whosoever looketh upon a woman to lust after her, have committed adultery with her already in his heart. So that's how most of these hookups occur anyway. So God doesn't approve of that. That's right. And what y'all just heard was me telling my wife to give me a drink. That's right. Yeah. My friend. My friend. <laughs> How's it? Mount, you got any final words for the people? Hey, no, sir. No, sir, man. All praises, man. Keep the laws and live. My wife said, I need a drink after that. <laughs> Oh, man, to be married in this truth. All praise to the most high God. Uh, we want to thank everybody once again. Hey, look, y'all keep the commandments in the faith of Christ. That's what this is about. We are restoring the decayed state of our people. All right. This has been another episode of Biblical Smoke. And with that, we're going to leave you with the Thanos snap.